Hey guys, welcome to this new video, and this one has been long in the making. Last year, November, I started a journey to improve the pre-assembled Quinn LED dig boards, and I believe I have succeeded in doing exactly that. What was first two LED boards that started DIY and became available pre-assembled too, has now become a complete LED controller ecosystem that is as of this video, in stock worldwide and locally in the US through Dr. Z's. Let's quickly take a closer look at what exactly changed. Right, so I'm just gonna ramble over the improved features of the board. It's a lot, so I'll try and make an index in the video description if you'd like to skip between features, and of course, there's all the pages and articles on quinled.info, my website about the controllers and all things LEDs. In its core, things are still the same. We still have the Quinn LED Dig Uno, now version 3, and the Quinn LED Dig Quad, which is now version 2. Both digital LED controllers to control your WS2812B, Neo Pixels, SK6812 or WS2811, and most other digitally controllable LED strip. When we started this journey, the Dig Uno came with a D1 Mini ESP8266 and the Dig Quad with a D1 Mini 32. But because of the amount of issues we've had with these bought ESP boards, I've designed a custom ESP32 board, which I'm calling the Quinn LED ESP32. What did you expect? <laughs> if you'd like to know more about that story, check out this video where I talk about it in more detail and also talk about some highlights about of the Quinn LED ESP32 board. Today I'm just saying all boards, including the Quinn LED Dig Uno, will now come with a Quinn LED ESP32 board by default. So no more ESP8266 or crappy ESP32 board. And even better, partly because of that, you can now select which one of three versions that you want it to come with. The normal board antenna, like you're used to from most boards, with an external antenna for better range or building it into an enclosure or something like that, or, and that's the only thing that isn't available yet, with an ethernet connector so you can hook it up directly to your wired network giving you a much improved real-time pixel drive response and no more reliance on Wi-Fi. But as said, I've talked about this custom ESP32 board before, so I'll keep this part short. The AB antenna board and AE antenna external are now available in both worldwide and US. Even better, if you're looking for an ESP32 for your own projects, they are now also available as separate purchases too. As said, for your own projects or to upgrade your current Quinn LED dig boards. You can even get them pre-soldered for a little bit extra in either the new normal form with all pins soldered or as a legacy addition for using it on previous versions of the Quinn LED dig boards. Okay, enough about the custom Quinn LED ESP32 for this video. Another thing that has changed is that before the boards were 5V and 12V compatible, but you needed to be careful to select the right input voltage with a jumper. Giving the board 12V with the jumper set to 5V, well, that, that wouldn't end well. So, I am very happy to report both boards are now fully auto magic 5V to 24V compatible. Even though 24 volt addressable LED strips are rare, these boards now perfectly work with them. So this means no more jumper to think of in regards to power. This comes with a warning though, the board will only take care of itself. It's kind of selfish. You are still in charge to connecting the right voltage power supply for the LEDs you're running. So Although the board won't die, you can still very much kill your LEDs with the wrong voltage. So keep that in mind. Features such as reverse polarity protection all remain and have even been improved somewhat over the previous versions. So even if you hook up things the wrong way, a fuse might pop, but 
the board should still survive without issue, and as a bonus, we'll try to protect your connected LEDs too. Let me know down in the comments if this saved your ass while connecting up LEDs late at night before. I know it has for me sometimes, so if it did, or you blew up some LEDs without a board, you're not alone. So let me, let me know down in the comments. I'd really like to know if the board maybe saved you from buying some new LEDs or power supplies or stuff like that. Then, 5V EXT, the connection you can use to hook up a separate power supply to the board to keep it online while you turn the big power supply and LEDs off to save a bit on power, has also gotten a huge upgrade. For the new pre-assembled boards, this input now also takes in 5V to 24V and can be a different voltage from the main input power supply voltage. So you can combine 5V LEDs with 12V standby power or the other way around. All good. It even has magic auto input switching now, so again, no more jumpers. Sadly, this will remain a pre-assembled only feature and will not be coming to the DIY versions, but a little bit more about that at the end of the video. The pin setup on the DIG Uno has also changed slightly, so next to the normal power input terminals, you now also have dedicated 5V EXT pins and it has the same 5V to 24V auto input and auto input switching circuit, so very easy now. Then, to help even more with 5V EXT setups and relays, a new port has spawned on the DIG Quad, and that is called the Q1R. This terminal is connected to the same pin as Q, the Q1 pin, you can find all the pins in the pinout articles, but it's now been configured as a GPO, so it lost the I, that outputs 5.12V. So if you have a relay that will work with 5V but not 3.3V, which the ESP normally outputs, that should now also work. Oh, and speaking of that very specific 5.12V, to make sure the data signals arrive even in the more challenging situations, the custom DC-DC circuit that is now on both pre-assembled boards Make sure that whatever voltage comes in, the per channel level shifters will always get a good and steady 5.12 volt supply. So even if input voltage fluctuates or even drops a bit, the level shifters will still give a constant strong output to your LED strip. So even if your LED strips are five or 10 meters away, it'll still keep sending it a strong data signal. Now, there are a whole lot of other small changes and tweaks, but I won't bore you with those. Just know the boards are better than ever, trademark, <laughs> and the features that make them popular, such as having 5V and 3.3V pins together with several GPIO pins, available to hook up sensors, buttons, uh, analog or digital microphones, or whatever else are still available, and with these new version boards, will even work in conjunction with the Ethernet version of the Quinn LED ESP32 on there. You can use the Ethernet version on the older legacy boards, but you'll lose a lot of the extra features, basically. I have a compatibility article about using the new Ethernet boards, which will arrive in two to three weeks, with a legacy dig board. So check that out in the description. To save some cost, because of now including the ESP32, on the DIG Uno, something had to go. And on the pre-assembled versions, the temperature sensor is no longer there. The resistor and capacitor are still there and the pads to solder it on are there, but we don't include or solder the sensor itself on the board anymore. The savings from this, as I said, helped include an ESP32 by default for the DIG Uno. So I think that's worth the trade-off. Speaking of pricing or rather price range now, as mentioned at the start of the video, the DIG Uno and DIG Quad are available now, and the DIG Uno with custom ESP32 board with normal board antenna is available for $27.50 from both stores. So that's a small raise versus the previous price, but as I mentioned, it does give you a lot of extra in return. Stepping up to the external antenna version, which comes with an antenna itself included, that will be $29.99, and the Ethernet version, which will be released in two to three weeks, as I said, will be $37.50 for the DIG Uno. Then the DIG Quad, 
This board starts at 3750 with again the custom ESP32, board antenna version included. The external antenna version is 3999 and the upcoming version with Ethernet will be 4750. Regarding Ethernet, that just needed a little bit of more time to develop. They are currently in full, full production production <laughs> and will arrive shortly. Once they do, you can get them included with your Queen LED dig board, or you can buy them separately to upgrade an existing Queen LED dig board. It does only come fully assembled with the ESP32 attached itself, so no combining it with an existing ESP32 board, and there are some compatibility issues if you're running a legacy board, but again, check that article in the description. I've really tried to keep costs under control. I realize these boards cost a lot more than just a DuPont wire and ESP8266, but especially the pre-assembled boards now provide a lot, I think, desirable features above the basic setup. Especially if you're going to be running these boards permanently installed in your house or project, the fuse protection alone is something you kind of want to have. But also the level shifters, onboard caps, custom ESP32 boards, screw terminals for securing your wires, well, everything included really make it a whole different experience than fiddling around with an ESP8266. In my opinion, but still. Then I want to mention DIY again. I will be making updated versions this year for the DIY designs, incorporating some of the changes, but not all of them. For a long time, I kept the DIY and pre-assembled 99% the same, but I decided to let that go because it was seriously holding me back regarding the features I could provide with these boards. I hope everyone can understand that. I'm still DIY at heart and have several projects I want to share and also get those to you in DIY and maybe pre-assembled form again later this year or next year. I just needed to finish this project or upgrade or rather ecosystem as I call it now, first. And while we're there, especially with Ethernet versions being available in two to three weeks, my vision for the whole is complete, or rather, where I want it to be right now. Much more to come in the future, but the new boards are a big step forward versus what they already were. Speaking of that future, since this has all become much more of a serious kind of business over the last year, we've also stepped up our game on the back end. I mentioned our testing procedure failing to catch an issue for a little while, those stupid ESP32 boards we just bought. Well, no more of that. I'm happy to report we've invested heavily in getting custom testing equipment made and all boards now get a proper test before we ship them off. Hopefully, combined with now producing everything in-house, such as the ESP32 board, this lowers failures and in the end, hassle for you guys. And if you're watching this video and are like, what the hell are th is this guy talking about in these boards? No worries. But if you want to get started putting up some, well, <laughs> addressable LEDs and do it, in my opinion, the right way, these boards will help you to do that. I'm looking into redoing some beginner tutorials next to the dozens of articles and tutorials videos I and Dr. Z's already have on our channels, so watch out for those in the future. Take a look at this article and video, for instance, showing you how you can power your LEDs over PUE. Who thought that would be possible? I certainly didn't, but testing shows you can, so hey. Next to all the articles and videos of me and Dr. Z's and on QuinnLED.info, we have a Discord server where we'll help you out with questions and make sure your LED projects also become a success. Let me know down in the comments if this helped you out in the past, when you, you were starting with LEDs and the boards and stuff like that. I'd love to hear. Oh, and coming back to Dr. Z's, I really, really want to thank him as a partner in all of this too. I really couldn't have gotten this far without him, and for you guys, it's been brilliant to have LED controllers and now even ESP32 boards available to you directly in the US, saving you a lot on shipping costs and time. If it's up to me, we're only going to expand that partnership in the future. Sadly, the partner in 
Canada, XGeeks, is still not doing too well. We're still trying to get that resolved, but haven't gotten that far yet. And I hope to share more news about that soon. For now, Canadian customers who want to buy should just order it in a worldwide store and they'll have their board in about two to three weeks. Now then, as people who watch my Queenboxed or live streams know, I always like to end the video by revealing some secrets. Well, you've been watching long enough, so the first one is because we now ship all the boards with an ESP32 instead of an ESP8266, and it comes all pre-flashed with WLED 0.12, the Quinn LED Dig Uno has now really become the Quinn LED Dig Duo. What that means, since the board has two independent data output channels, if you're using LED strip that uses a single wire, such as the normal WS2812B, you can now hook up two and control them individually with a single board. If you want to run a lot of LED strips, however, the Dig Quad is much better suited with its four data output channels and many fused and reverse polarity protected power injection terminals. But remember that Q1R port I talked about for the 5.12 volt relay? If you're not connecting a relay to it, that is now your super secret fifth data channel since it has the exact same hardware in place as the other data channels. Hey. <laughs> and with that, I'll leave you. As said, all is available and in stock right now. And if you do decide to pick up a board from the worldwide store or from Dr. Z's, thank you so, so much. It really means a lot to us. Have fun playing with all the LEDs and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.